we've worked on lots of projects over the years in computer clubhouses and other informal settings. I think we've really grown to appreciate the important role that passion and interest plays in the learning process. One question is, how does this play out in school? It's a question that a number of educators have been raising in the Learning Creative Learning Forum. How can interest-based learning be supported in school? Yeah, I know as we talked about this, it reminded us of one of the sessions in last year's Learning Creative Learning when we had a conversation with Mimi Ito, and she discussed some of these issues about uh, ways of connecting interest-based learning in school settings. So we thought it'd be useful to give people a chance to take a look at that session from last year. You know, what, what about these spaces for just messing around and exploring with your friends and doing all of these unstructured informal learning opportunities? Um, should schools be in that business? I don't, I think that schools shouldn't feel like they have to take responsibility for that whole ecosystem. But we've been talking about schools as one node in a young person's learning ecology. And it's a really, really important one for interest discovery. So young people, if you're just subject to what's in your social network or family, there's a limited number of interests that young people can get exposed to. So public institutions like school museums, libraries play a really important uh, role in exposure to interests. It can be an opportunity to deepen interests, uh, create um, connections to expertise that might not be locally available to young people. And often, you know, schools, we find that that exploratory learning can often exist at the margins of a school environment because schools provide safe spaces for kids in the form of after school kinds of clubs, um, you know, environments like computer labs. Uh, if you have a liberal <laughs> computer lab teacher, it <laughs> can often be that kind of environment for that exploratory learning. But that's a very different model for saying than saying, you know, I think like what the media lab is doing and more of the higher education space that that exploration and tinkering and discovery necessarily has to be fully within school walls. Um, schools can provide points of uh, connection and exposure and um, sort of ref reference building to other yeah. parts of ecosystem without having to take it all on themselves. You know, one example that Katie Salen has developed in the context of the Quest to Learn schools is during most of the school year, they do a fairly, you know, they have to do their standards driven uh, curriculum. But then after every unit, they have what they call a boss level because it's a game based school. Uh, and those are these moments when the kids come together and they collaborate and they have to build a Rube Goldberg machine together, or put on a play together, uh, you know, and then suddenly they're working together. Goals are undefined. They're exploring. It's very inquiry based. And then the community shows up to see what they did. So that embodies a lot of those principles of connected learning that we're looking at within the school setting. But it's not something that takes over the entire curriculum necessarily. Um, I think there's also really simple things like remember show and tell, um, you know, invitations for yeah. kids to bring their interests into school, even if they're small ones. I mean, they don't have to be gigantic things, yeah. but just say, oh, school assignments that allow kids to bring the learning they're doing out of school into school or, you know, just something as simple as an opportunity to share. I mean, there, there's lots of things that I think teachers have been doing and can do to open up those connections. We thought it'd be interesting to hear what your thought is about that. What, how, to, how do you support interest-based learning, whether it's in schools or home or in your community? So, so we're going to give the breakout sessions another try. I tell you, it worked pretty well last week, although it's still a learning process for us, still experimenting. But after this video ends, you'll be able to join one of the breakout sessions that's right below this screen. Uh, so you just click on join. If you get an error, just join a different session because they do fill up, only 10 people can join. Uh, and we'll give about 15 minutes for people to have a discussion about you know, what are ways that you, you know, support interest-based learning in, in different settings where you've been working. At the end of about 15 minutes, we'll send a message to the uh, different breakout sessions to come back for a final video about the activity for next week. But if you're in a good discussion, don't worry, just keep on going. The video about next week's activity will be available online. Okay, why don't you go out, we'll you know, check out the breakout groups. We look forward to joining you in some of those discussions.